We are going to start with Dr. Lucy Boyce Kennedy. Um, she is a melanoma oncologist here who is in our melanoma and high risk skin cancer department. Um, she hails from um, Duke and Vanderbilt, where she did her medical training. And we are uh, so lucky to have her here as one of our oncologists. Um, and she'll be speaking today on Merkel cell carcinoma, hope when rare things happen. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Funchain, for the introduction. I'm Lucy Boyce Kennedy. I'm so excited to be joining you tonight and talking about Merkel cell. Um, and so in a minute here, I will share my slides and we can get started. Okay, so I hope my slides are showing. Um, and so as Dr. Fenchain mentioned, tonight I'm going to be talking about Merkel cell carcinoma and kind of the second line of this talk was hope where rare things happen. So really talking about some changes recently in the treatment of Merkel cell that have brought our patients a lot of hope. I'll start with some background. Merkel cell is a rare and aggressive type of skin cancer. In the United States, it happens in about 0.7 out of every 100,000 people. So you can remember Dr. Funchain was talking about just how common non-melanoma skin cancers are, but Merkel cell itself is actually very rare. The incidence or the amount of Merkel cell is increasing in multiple countries, including in the United States. And if you look at the picture on the slide, that's what that's showing, basically that the number of cases of Merkel cell is really rising over time. And you can see that it's actually rising quite steeply. One of the risk factors for Merkel cell is older age. So as the United States population ages, the number of cases of Merkel cell is rising. And so by 2025, there are predicted to be more than 3,200 cases in the US per year. Next, we'll talk about some risk factors for developing Merkel cell. Um, so the majority of, Mer of cases of Merkel cell carcinoma are diagnosed um, in Caucasian people. Exposure to UV radiation is a risk factor. The chance of getting Merkel cell is higher in people who are older, and the average age of diagnosis is around 74 to 76 years old. The chance of getting Merkel cell is higher in men compared to women. And another important risk factor is immune suppression. This can include a history of organ transplant or HIV or cancers of the blood or lymph nodes, which can cause abnormalities or dysregulation of the immune system. The risk of Merkel cell also increases in people who have um, other cancers, again, especially these blood-based cancers, which can lead to dysregulation of the immune system. And then finally, development of Merkel cell has been linked to Merkel cell polyoma virus, which is a virus that's found in the human skin flora, and it's also found in some Merkel cell carcinomas. Next, we'll talk about clinical features of Merkel cell carcinoma. So what does this look like? And on the slide, I'm just showing a few different examples from the literature of what Merkel cell can look like so that you can get an idea. It usually shows up as a rapidly growing, firm, non-tender, flesh-colored or red nodule. And one way to remember the clinical features of Merkel cell is to use the acronym AEIOU, which we'll go through. So A stands for asymptomatic, and that means that it's usually not painful. E means that it's expanding rapidly. So these tumors can really grow quite quickly. I stands for immune suppression. So going back again to that risk factor of people that have a history of some underlying immune suppression. O stands for older than 50 years old. Again, we reviewed age as a risk factor. And then U stands for UV exposed site. Merkel cell is a rare skin cancer, and sometimes it can be misdiagnosed as a benign skin condition. For example, it could be misdiagnosed as a cyst. And so our suspicion for Merkel cell should be high if, if we have a patient in front of us with a lesion that's meeting multiple of these criteria. Usually if there's a concerning skin lesion, the first step is to get a biopsy to find out what it is. And then from there, there would be additional information your team would get if it were a Merkel cell to help assign a stage to it. And so on this slide, I'm showing just a very basic version of the staging system for Merkel cell carcinoma. And I'll go through just in very general terms kind of how I think about staging. Um, in general, if the Merkel cell is limited only to the tumor, the original tumor on the skin, then that's a stage one or stage two. The difference between stage one and two is going to depend on the size of the tumor. If the Merkel cell has spread to the closest set of lymph nodes to that tumor, or if it's spreading kind of through the skin close to the tumor, then that would be a stage three Merkel cell. There's features your team would be looking at kind of within stage three to help decide how high risk this is. And these would include the size of the tumor or the amount of tumor in the lymph node and whether the tumor in the lymph node was picked up because you or your team could feel a lump or it was picked up at surgery but could only be seen under the microscope. 
Um, and so I call that regional spread. And then finally, if the Merkel cell has spread to organs inside your body, or if it's spread to areas beyond that local lymph node basin, then that would be considered a stage four Merkel cell. And I call that distance spread. If you're diagnosed with Merkel cell, we typically do get scans. So we can see if the Merkel cell has spread anywhere else in your body, because we know that Merkel cell has quite a high risk of spreading. For patients who are diagnosed with stage one, two, or three Merkel cell, so that means Merkel cell that's either limited to the skin alone or has just spread kind of within the skin close by or to the regional lymph nodes, I would call this local regional Merkel cell. And this is usually treated with a combination of surgery with or without radiation, um, kind of depending on the different risk factors and the uh, recommendations of your multidisciplinary team. Merkel cell is a highly radiosensitive cancer, and that means that it responds really well to radiation. So on um, slides in the future, we'll talk about immune therapy for stage four Merkel cell carcinoma, or for patients where surgery or radiation isn't felt to be possible or optimal. So the challenge with treating even localized Merkel cell carcinoma is that we know that it has a relatively high risk of coming back after surgery and radiation. So on this slide, I'm showing a recurrence risk calculator. This is available at MerkelCell.org. And this um, kind of takes into account multiple um, features specific to your tumor and your age. Um, and we'll kind of spit out this personalized um, chance of how likely your Merkel cell is to come back um, after surgery and radiation. So I often use this when I'm meeting patients with Merkel cells, help them get a better idea of what their personalized risk and prognosis is. Um, and you can see that it takes a lot of different factors into account. You can see like the year it was diagnosed, age, and then at the bottom, some other features that are related to your tumor that may have been um, some information from your surgery that your medical team should be able to share with you. Um, and then I left their default numbers plugged in so you can see what their output looks like. But basically, it gives you this personalized estimate of the risk that your Merkel cell would come back. So for the example patient in this scenario, um, it gave us back this 22% risk that the Merkel cell would come back after treatment. The website I took this from is MerkelCell.org. And I think it has a lot of good patient information on Merkel cell if you are interested in reading more. So finally, we'll talk about immune therapy for Merkel cell. So this is used for patients with stage four Merkel cell carcinoma, and it's used in situations where surgery and radiation aren't felt to be likely to control or treat all of the cancer. Immune therapies are IV medicines. They target the immune system and they basically help use your own immune system to recognize and attack the cancer. And immune therapy has been shown to be highly effective in treating Merkel cell carcinoma. There are a few different immune therapy options for Merkel cell. The drug names um, include pembrolizumab, avelumab, and nivolumab. And there is a new immune therapy drug called retifanlimab. This got accelerated FDA approval for Merkel cell a few weeks ago, and it works on the same pathway as the other immune therapy drugs that I listed. Overall, we know that the chance of immune therapy working to control Merkel cell is really high, and that immune therapy can continue working for a long time. Um, and so when you look at the clinical trials, the chance that immune therapy would work for Merkel cell is around 60 to 70 percent. So it works in around two thirds of patients. And in the majority of patients where it works, it continues working for a long time. So again, kind of back to the clinical trials that we have in one of these studies in patients where the immune therapy was working at the beginning, it was still working at the three year mark in about 70 percent of those people. Um, and so on this slide, I included some figures from a patient. This isn't one of my patients. It's actually taken from the um, press release from Pembrolizumab's FDA approval for Merkel cell. And it just has some examples of how quickly we can see patients respond. So if you look at the figures on the left at baseline, you can see in the bottom left kind of the patient's scar, which is indicated with the red arrow, and then the subcutaneous nodule here that's circled in black that we'll be watching. And then on the top left, you can see their baseline CT, and you can see these kind of pale gray or white irregularly shaped areas. These are areas of, of recurrent tumor. Um, if you look at this patient three weeks after starting immune therapy, you can see the nodule um, area of the nodule is outlined and it's nearly flat. Um, and then if you look at their scans 12 weeks after starting treatment, if you look here kind of for those white or pale gray tumors, you can see that they're basically gone. 
Um, and this is consistent with what we've seen in our clinic too. So we've seen that Merkel cell can respond really quickly and really dramatically to immune therapy. Um, for example, I've had patients with really large, rapidly growing tumors that are causing problems in their daily lives, like for example, preventing people from moving their arms or sitting down. Um, and after starting with immune therapy, many of them have returned to clinic kind of at the three week mark for the next dose. And at that time, the tumors may already be completely gone. Um, and so I think one final thing kind of on the future horizons for Merkel cell. So the, the reason that this talk um, was kind of subtitled hope when rare things happen is because immune therapy has really given our patients with Merkel cell a lot of hope, even in a situation with a rare and aggressive type of cancer. And so now that we know that immune therapies can work so well in um, Merkel cell that cannot be cut out with surgery, we're starting to ask the question of whether immune therapy could also be used earlier to help reduce the risk that a localized or a local regional Merkel cell um, to help prevent that from coming back after surgery. So there are clinical trials looking at using immune therapy after surgery um, with or without radiation to see if this helps reduce the risk of Merkel cell coming back. And we do um, look forward to hearing the results of these studies. And that is the end of my presentation, but thank you all so much for joining. Thank you so much, Dr. Kennedy. That was a, a really awesome talk. I love hearing about Merkel cell. I think it's, um, it tells us how much cancers, cancer treatment has changed and how much new treatments like immunotherapy and, um, and in other cancers targeted therapy have really changed the face of the cancer. So it's a great story to hear and it's, it's skin cancer. So it's nice to hear about tonight.